What would your reaction be if you saw the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in real life? To be honest, it's hard to imagine how you'd really react. Typically, the turtles try not to be seen. They're ninjas, after all. But since the very first TMNT comic, there have been some instances of humans being exposed to the turtles. Excluding the Foot Clan, of course. In issue number one of volume one of the TMNT, the Purple Dragon Gang calls the turtles freaks who are wearing stupid turtle costumes. Leonardo then remarks to himself that they're not wearing costumes. Of course, this was obviously the very first mention of turtle costumes, but it has become something of a running gag at this point. In issue number 12, a paramilitary group called CRAP also mistook the turtles as people in turtle costumes. There are also countless examples of the same situation in the various TV adaptations of TMNT. For example, this encounter in episode 24 of the 2003 series. Whoa! Wrong time of the year for Halloween, freak! Two. Okay, boys. Time to peel this guy out of his monster suit! But let's be honest, you can get away with quite a lot in comics and cartoons, but pulling something like this off can be very tricky in a live-action adaptation, such as the 1990 movie. The TMNT universe is interesting in that it's similar to the real world. Most humans will go about their day without encountering ninjas, or utrams, or triceratons. But because the TMNT universe is meant to be similar to the real world, and it's not just a fantasy world on another planet or something, then you need to maintain as much realism as possible without breaking the audience's suspension of disbelief. If humans don't act and react like humans, and it's a movie where they are supposed to, then the audience will recognize that and become disengaged with the movie. For example, if someone goes to a horror movie about werewolves, the audience is willing to suspend their disbelief about werewolves for the sake of enjoying the movie because obviously they don't think werewolves are actually real. But if the human characters in the movie are not afraid, or are generally unfazed by the werewolves, then the audience's suspension of disbelief will break. And for what it's worth, I think the 1990 TMNT movie did a good job of this. When the human characters met the turtles for the first time, there was a nice balance of comedy with reactions that seem actually appropriate for each character. Take, for instance, the iconic first meeting between Casey Jones and Raphael. Casey addresses the elephant, er, turtle in the room by describing Raph as a bald punker with green makeup. Hey, what are you, some sort of punker? Huh? God, I hate punkers. Especially bald ones with green makeup. We wear masks over ugly faces. It's just a great line that fits Casey's character so well, and I've got to give the writers props for including this and choosing not to just ignore the issue altogether. The movie also had a great scene when April first saw the turtles up close. April's reaction was one of sheer horror, which seems realistic for a normal woman encountering mutant turtles for the first time. She coped with the stress of the situation by rationalizing it as a dream. And I think a lot of people might think they'd react more like April. It seems obvious that you'd have fear and then disbelief when you're encountered by talking turtles. But if everyone reacted that way in the comics and cartoons, then that would obviously be boring. Instead of fighting the purple dragons, there would be no fight because they'd be running away scared for their lives. But that begs the question, how would people really react in the real world? It's hard to say for sure, but we do have an idea of how the human mind works. Eh, kinda. According to Swiss psychologist Jean Piaget, knowledge is categorized into groups called schemas that are constantly adapting. For example, a young child might first develop a schema for a dog. He knows that a dog is small, has hair, four legs, and a tail. But when the little boy encounters a cat for the first time, he might initially call it a dog. His parents explain that it's actually a cat, 
so he adjusts his schemas appropriately and new information is learned. However, there is one problem. That's how processing new information works for children. But schemas can become increasingly rigid and difficult to modify as people grow older. Schemas will often persist, even when people are presented with new evidence that contradicts their beliefs. So, how does this fit into the Ninja Turtles? Well, when an adult sees a Ninja Turtle for the first time, their mind will likely default to their pre-existing schemas. In other words, they'll see a human-sized, bipedal creature that walks and talks like a human, and they will immediately process what they are seeing as someone in a Halloween costume, or something like that. Considering this information, it's actually pretty likely that someone would initially assume the Ninja Turtles are people in costumes. Of course, psychology isn't an exact science, especially in Piaget's case and people process uncertainty in different ways. So, there really is no 100% way to know how everyone will react. Anyway, what do you guys think? What would your reaction be to the turtles? As always, let me know down in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe.